Tamara here, nice of you to join me and a very warm welcome to my channel. It's lovely to have you here with me today. Now we're on part nine of the wardrobes and albums project and we are starting album two today. Now album two, I'm not actually going to go through the construction process because I've already done that in album one. And what I will do is I will put a timestamp um, up on screen and also in the description box telling you um, which um, where to go in part three of this series of videos where you can see the construction of the album. Before we go into that, please don't forget so. to subscribe to my channel. It really does help. Every single subscriber really helps my channel grow and I do appreciate appreciate each and every one of you. Also come and join me on social media. I'll put all the links in the description box down below. But I also have a group on Facebook called Memories Paper Art. And that's a lovely place for you to come and join and show the makes that you've made using my videos. Or just um, in general, any crafts that you, you make, be it with other people, um, you know, you're very free to show them in the group. So let's get on with the tutorial. So as I so as I say, I've already prepped my book. Now I've already made it up. I've already put my album pieces together, and it's ready to go. And then I've cut out my bits that I need to get it to be able to then put in our pages. And I've also cut the pages out and the first page so let me just move this out because this is that's the first page one these are the ones i want here so as i say i've already prepped my book so i'm going to put that over there for a moment and bring out these pieces here now these are my inner workings of my album so it's what we need so it's the hinges the spine mount and obviously the pages as well so if we go um, to my, it's not actually on there, but uh, I've got it up on screen. If you just bear with me two tickles and I will get to the page that I need. So if you've printed out and or downloaded my cu cutting guide, this is completely free of charge. So you are free to download it and print it out for your own personal use. So, um, for, so the album two, now I'm gonna put an extra hinge in my album, which we'll go through and show you how to do that. Now, here's my pieces here. So, you'll need to cut out, so get your cardstock ready. So you'll need a spine mount at five and five inches by six and three quarters that's the spine mount you'll also need three sets of hinges now the first hinge which is hinge one you need to cut this at two and a half by six and three quarters and then you'll need two um, of the one and a half inches by six and three quarters and they're going to be hinge one uh, sorry hinge two and hinge three then you'll need five pages and they are going to measure six and three quarters by six and three quarters okay so that's your pages now we don't need the pages just yet so put them out the way now if we bring in our spine mount we can go ahead and put that on now again it does, I do show you how to do all this in fine detail on um, the album one, part three, it is called. And, and as I say, I will put a time stamp in the description box and on, on the video as well so that you can see it. I might put in an, an iCard so that you can then go and you can just click on that and it will take you to it might be better so all I'm doing now is I've just added my double-sided tape to each side of my spine mount I'm adding it to each side of the join 
on my album and I'm also going to add a little bit of glue as well now I've come over a little bit on that there we go you don't need to go all the way down to the bottom with this or to the top because your spine mount doesn't go all the way it's um, about an eighth of an inch smaller so I'm just going to move that over like so get a pokey tool pokey 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 so I'm just going to take off the double sided tape backing on all sides and also off the book as well and this pokey tool is not very good that's probably because it's not a pokey tool there we go okay so I'm going to add a little bit of glue as well just so that it keeps it in place and I'm just going to add it to this each side of that glue that double sided tape like so might just put one along there okay put the pin back in that seems to help it okay now the main thing is to get this as straight as you possibly can because this is what your pages are going to line up with it doesn't matter if it's not equal this side but at the top and the bottom most definitely when you're happy burnish that down and then grab a ruler and just bend those joins up one two and then give a little wiggle little wiggle wiggle there we go so that then will keep that album standing nice and proud just stick them down that's better so next we need to then work on our hinges let me just time determine to keep my desk tidy it's not going to work i know but we can try can't we so with our hinges so bringing in hinge one which is the two and a half by six and three quarters we're going to school this at half an inch and then at one inch and then we're going to turn it 180 degrees and do the same on the other side so it's half an inch one inch turn it round half an inch one inch okay like so now don't worry is it does look like you've got an awful lot of scores there but all will come apparent in a moment so what happens is is that our next hinge will get stuck in between so in the center column like that that's where it's going to get stuck now this here on the outside is your actual hinge that's going to go um, onto your paper and then these this is just the width in between so all we've done is just given ourselves a guideline to where the middle is of that hinge so for our hinge two we need to score this at half an inch turn it 180 and then score it again at half an inch okay so that's then our hinge two so hinge three well all we need to do with this we just need to score it at half an inch and again at one inch okay and what's going to happen then is this is going to get stuck to our hinge as we come to do it bring in no bring in our hinges and then you also need your 
teflon tool okay so we need to fold and crease our score line so i'm just working on hinge one so i've just folded that first score line over like so okay so you've only folded the first score line you're not going to bother folding the other ones because that's going to be your bed so with the second one this now needs to go onto in the middle where that those two those score lines is so where that column is it needs to go in between those columns so where i've i've grayed out with my pencil that's where our second hinge is going to sit now with our, our third hinge this is going to go underneath our first hinge and it's going to get attached to the underside of that so let's get our tape and I'm going to put the tape onto the back of hinge 2 okay, burnish that down I am going to add glue as well okay, to give us that wiggle time Okay, and then we can put this down now what I did forget to do was just fold and burnish them sides but that's okay I can do it once it's dry let's just move it over put it in the right place and it makes it easier when you've got those guidelines so I'm going to burnish that down now there we go so that's the second hinge done so coming on to the third we're going to have it where we've burnished the half an inch score and we're going to turn it over and no we're not beg your pardon we're going to keep it the right side up but what I'm going to do is turn it the other way because I've got my writing on that I don't really want that showing through like I've got with this one so let me just rub them out I'm just showing off because I found the razor so with this one okay let's put it back okay so with our third hinge what we want to do is we need to put our double-sided tape on to the right side of that hinge okay because that's going to go underneath so add in take off the backing strip and then add in the glue like so bring it over now you're going to line this scored edged up with the scored edge on your hinge three so I'm just going to lift it up just push that in like so and then burnish that down when you are happy that it's nice and level and in the right place and then that gives you your foot gives you your fifth hinge okay like so so put them into our books we're going to put them in like so and to do that I'm going to add tape and glue as well do a mixture of both okay. but I think no I'm going to leave it like that okay let's take off this backing
and add our glue. Now the glue, don't put it onto the, the actual hinge, just goes on the back. So if you want to fold those over, just so that you don't inadvertently put your glue on there. So this is where you need to line it up with the top and the bottom okay, and then just by eye it in the centre bit there. Okay. And when you're happy just burnish that down. You might get some glue coming out but just wipe that off if you do. is our fifth hinge so we can then put in we've got five pages I'm going to work on page one but when I put it into my book I'm going to turn it around and put my page one here so that I can line it up with this side here so coming on to the actual page so we're on page one so we need our scoreboard bringing in our pieces now I haven't cut the pattern paper that we can cut um, as we go but before so this is the page so this is the page we're going to be doing I should have shown this at the beginning at the big beginning look at the beginning right I'm going to turn my fan on just for a moment okay so this is page one this is what we're doing so we, it's the photo frame flip page so you've got your photo frame in here so this comes out okay with some acetate and it flips round and then you can open up then you need to flip it back to then open the second flap and then you can have photographs on each of those pages with obviously um, some photo mats as well uh, in there I'm just going to put photo mats in there I quite like it where you can take in you can put different photos in I quite like that idea so that's the page we're doing so before we attach we attach it all we will need to add in our um, just double checking yeah so before no well actually we can do it can't we so let's do all the scoring first of all so no actually right let me give you the sizes of what we are going to be cutting out so page so uh, you're on page nine of your cutting guide and you will need a top flap and that's going to measure five and a quarter by six and three quarters you'll need a flap two which is the bottom flap and that's going to need to measure six and three quarters by five and one eighth then you'll need the photo frame parts so part one is the front piece and that's going to measure six and three quarters by seven and a quarter then part two which is the back piece is going to be six and one eighth by six and one eighth and then you'll need a piece of acetate that is five and three quarters by five and three quarters so that is all our cutting in our for our cardstock so far so bringing in your flaps, so your bottom flap and your top flap, we need to score these edges. So we need to score them at, so we've got the short side up against your measuring guide and the long side up against your trimmer. We're going to score this at a half and at five eighths. 
and you're going to do that with the bottom as well so again similar same place short side up against the trimmer long side up against the cutting guide and we're going to score this at one uh, sorry at half and five eighths so that's those so then coming on to our photo frame so we need to cut on sorry we need to score on all three on three sides at half an inch so we need to score on the two short sides and one long side so let's go so it's half an inch and go round the three sides like so I'm going to cut those corners off so these corners here these can come off it just makes the box sit a lot flatter so we now need to give us a frame so that we can put our acetate inside so you need to do this at a one inch frame so you can either do it where you fold these over like so and then measure up one inch from that scored line okay or you can then give go and do a half inch but you remember you're only doing the one and a half inches on the three short sides okay the one that hasn't got the extra score line will be just one inch so I'm going to use my pencil so that I can give myself a guide turn it round and do the same thing so I'm going to measure this at one and a half come around one and a half and then the top will just be my one inch okay that's not done bit my one inch there we go so that's my frame that, that should give me a nice sized frame I'm just going to check because that does look rather small Let's turn that round and get my so that's four and a quarter no exactly the same so I was right just checking so with this now what we need to do is line up our pencil lines with the I've got on mine on my trimmer I've got like a little gully in between so I'm going to line my pencil line up with this gully underneath bring it back and I can see that now I'm also lined up in this gully here so bring your blade down okay now don't cut from right from the top all the way otherwise you're going to cut everything off you need to just cut from this pencil line to the pencil line at the bottom okay now my blade has got like a halfway mark on mine so it, sh it shows me where my blade is so it's quite handy so I'm just gonna go there and then the second one and then the last one at the top and then that should just fall out if I've done my job properly if you get some that are just um, holding on by a thread just gently pull it away so then that is my frame ready to be put into my book so that is all the scoring that we've got to do so I can put this out the way for a moment bring in this eraser and I'm just going to erase these pencil lines that I've got just on the corners
hold your frame in place because this is a little bit flimsy you don't want to go and break it so I'm going to put that up there so I know where it is so we can now come and put the acetate on so my acetate is just going to go along there so what I'm going to do with mine is I'm going to put my double sided tape not right to the edge of my frame but maybe leaving a one eighth of an inch gap I'm just going to go round and put my tape on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, burnish those down. And then take the backing off. place this on like so and just burnish that down and then you'll you'll get it all those air bubbles out there we are okay so then that's the frame done next what we need to do is we need to put on our a little hole here where we can put our brad through now i've got some treasury tags One second. There we go. i've got some treasury tags now you should have um, five of these in your kit if you've bought the kit and we need to just put our hole on now i'm not actually going to attach it yet because we have got to add our patterned paper to that but we could put the hole in ready so i'm just going to use a very small uh, i was going to say punch but i don't think i've got one small enough so i'm going to just poke it through about here i'm not giving any measurements because it's not that technical if you you need to go through that acetate as well okay like so and then that just gives you your hole and then that is then ready to decorate with our pattern paper with this one I would back it now before we in our pattern paper before we put it in onto our frame so you'll need to cut your pattern paper at six inches by six inches okay so i've covered my back piece now with my card with my pattern paper so i'm gonna be ready now to attach it all together now i was going to have this coming out the back here but i've changed my mind i'm actually going to have it coming out of the actual back of my backboard so to attach this we need our double sided tape now the double sided tape you want it I'm just going to double check I want to make sure yes yeah, so this is a little bit smaller so what we want to do is we want to make sure our double sided tape is um, as near to the open edge as you can get it so maybe about an eighth of an inch gap maybe that would be quite nice just so that we should know that the double sided tape is definitely going to not be seen okay burnish those down now you may want to just use a bit of rubbing alcohol just to take off if you've got any bits of like debris or fingerprints or anything like that on your acetate before you close it up so just put a little bit on and all you do is just rub it over and then it obviously the alcohol will evaporate but then you 
end up with this takes off all the dust and all the all the bits and pieces that you get stuck on there like so all the fingerprints I mean I've got some on the back there but I'm not going to worry about that too much just as long as it's not off the actual acetate on the inside so I'm going to take off my double sided tape the backing anyway not the actual tape like so just push those down and make sure you've got if you've got directional paper make sure you get it up the right way and then I'm going to stick one side down first so and I'm going to start with the corner and then just go up okay like so and then come all the way along and then just push it down there we go and then it's in place so now what we can do is just use this hole and just poke through um, with your pokey tool for your brad to go through okay so we've got this far with our photo frame now we're going to now cut out the pattern paper for the frame and also for the back now the back is going to be six and one eighth by six and the window frame we need to cut that out at six and one eighth by six and one eighth I think that the 12 by 12 paper it should come maybe in like 12 and a half by 12 and a half that would be so much easier and you wouldn't waste not waste but you would be able to um, get a lot more out of your sheets so once I've cut this out because this is going to be the frame I need to cut a 7 eighths of an inch window frame from the middle so again I'm just going to use my pencil I'm going to just pencil that on there turn it round and then do the 7 eighths again put that over there 7 eighths and then one more seven eighths like so and then i'm just going to cut it with my trimmer so i'm going to just line up those pencil marks and then just cut to that pencil line that's at the top there and the one that's at the bottom and then just turn it around and do the same thing again There we go. Hopefully that's taken that out. Yes, it has. Now all you need to do is just very carefully rub out those pencil lines careful not to rip your frame I've done that a few times okay, and if you had any round at the edges just wipe them off rub them off as well and then we're going to add the distress I'm going to do the edges inside as well as the ones on the outside Very carefully do these inside ones. Okay, so we've done those, and then this is going to fit around our frame like so. So we can go ahead and stick that on just make sure I've yes I have I've done my hole so I've punched my hole from the front to the back so that we can then put this on and then we'll punch from the hole from the underside 
Alex. Add a bit of glue. And get it out the right way, which is this way. And then we can just go ahead and place it on. So put your hole through like so. So next let's bring in our one of our pages and then the other parts of the page. So you've got your top and your bottom flaps and we've already scored them which is good so I'm just going to crease them over like so and what I'm going to do on these I will round my corners so I'm going to do that even on my album as well because I've done that on the first one like so okay so let me do that now while I think of it I will just go around with my black permanent pen just to black out them corners like so and you won't even know that it's not covered again there So now we've folded these all over, we can then start to attach it and get it um, sort of all assembled. Now I'm going to use my double sided tape and we're going to put this on the valley fold because what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this over onto the other side of the page because my other page is just a pocket after this so I'm not going to have a lot of bulk on that pocket but then I'm so I'm just going to it will just keep it this part nice and clear so once you've done that remember to do your corners now I'm just going to do the corners at the, the ends I'm not going to do the tops of them and again on here I'm not doing the one the corners near the spine I'm just doing the corners on the outer edges so with that you will probably need to just corner this side here like so move that down move that up there we go so that's that side so taking that's the bottom flap and of course I would have done the wrong one and this is the top one. Oh Tamara right so I'll just do this one okay so starting with the top flap let's take the tape off now I'm going to put this let me move this out of the way so I don't need that now so get it right so this is the inside so it would go this way so I'm just checking that I've got it right so I'm going to push my page up to the first score line from where your double sided tape is okay 
and then I'm just going to push that over line it up with the sides okay like so and then push it over when you're happy okay like so and then that will give you your one eighth of an inch gusset on the correct side so that's my top flap now then my bottom one do exactly the same just take off that backing and of course I've got it on the wrong side so I will have to do both of them but um, we just add that tape on there so I don't get stuck Again, I'm going to line it up, but I'm going to do it this way. So I'm going from the this side with that. And I might need to might, might need to do this corner. I won't do it on all of them, just this one, because obviously I got it wrong. So again, just line it up with that first score line, and line up your sides. And then when you're happy, just ease that glue strip down like so. And then we can just push that up. So then that's the bottom flap. So you've got your top flap and your bottom flap. Next, what we need to do is we need to poke our holes. So we need to actually physically put this on now so that we can we're not going to attach it but we need to get our holes in place if I just bring in the book that I've done so we turn it round and then the the brad leg is on the back here of my bottom flap okay so I've also what I've done on this is added in a magnet which will do as well so get your page or your photo frame in place where you want it to be okay and then just with your pokey tool just punch your hole through so I've just punched it through so I've got my mark and then I'm just going to make that hole a little bit bigger and so I've got my hole done so now we can go ahead and start to decorate so for the base page our pattern paper is going to measure six and five eighths by six and five eighths the top flap which you need to cut two of is four and a half by six and five eighths the bottom flap you will also need to cut two of and that they will be four and three eighths by six and five eighths you'll also need to do the window backing which is six and one eighth by six but what um, we're going to do is first of all before I cut them out is as we've placed this on I want to add my magnet so I'm going to very carefully just attach this photo frame to my page I'm not going to fully do it I just want it so that I can get I can put my um, magnet on so let's get it so that it's correct so turn that round and I'm just going to add just for a moment I, I will cut them down mine are a bit big so I will add this magnet and it's going to go on the corner here like so and then what I'll do is I'll turn that round like so and then I'll open my open my flap up okay like so and then get your next magnet I've got two there and just let it find it when it has you can then put your foundation tape over the top 
and that then should be in place. So you can then go ahead and take off your photo frame because that's done its job for the moment and then you can cut your bits for this. So I'm going to do a time jump. I have just finished what I've done is I've cut my bottom piece on my bottom pattern paper and then I've just attached our photo frame to the top so all I've done is I've punched or I've just pokey tooled my hole through which we did before and then I've just then put the brad through that hole but what I've also done is I've just chopped down the legs of that brad a little bit you may not have to if you've got shorter brad legs if you have got my kit you may have to just um, use some um, snips just to make them a little bit smaller it, they, they, it's not very hard so that then is going to snap into place with that magnet on there like so if you don't want to put the twist on you can just put um, another set of magnets and have this as a take out piece um, that is again um, up to you it's another design feature before we attach the frame onto our flap you will need to cover the back and the back measurement is six by six and one eighth once you've covered it, don't forget to punch out your hole for your brad. Onto the back of the brad, just add a little bit of your foundation tape just to hold that brad in place and to stop it spinning around when you're turning and it might rip your pattern paper. So I'm just going to get that around where I want it and then just add the foundation tape onto the top of that like so. Now I may turn that round so it's up ways like so and then put my tape on. So I'm going to put one piece there and next here like so. Okay just burnish that down like that. And then that should stop that then from, yes, turning round. There we go. Next. Okay, you may have to do it a couple of times just to um, get that memory. And we've now finished our page. Now that's now ready to go into our book because we need to now put this in before we then start on the next page because what's going to happen is this is going to the spine is going to attach to our page and then we'll just then paper over the top it's it's just a different way of making your pages instead of having the big gap and not the gap sorry the pocket in the top here it's a just just a different way so I'm going to put my tape now where I'm going to work from the front um, going backwards seeing as I've now done it that way um, what I normally do is work from the back to the front but um, I haven't for this unknown reason I haven't done it on this one Although I put tape on both sides of my hinge, only put it on one. So put it onto the left hand side of your hinge as near to the top edge as you can get it. Now if I put a white piece of card under there, so can you see there's my tape and then that's the line. Now we want it as near to that line as you can. So I'm just going to take off the one side and we're going to put the this this page the hinge is going to go on to the back of the page. So how I'm going to do it is I'm going to push my page into the bottom of 
the hinge so onto that scored line line it up at the, the, the sides and then just push down like so and then fold it over and then over again that's it and it's in Now I can see that it's not very straight. And you see here I've got it's it's a bit wibbly wobbly. I'll just show you. You might not see now, but this is what we do if we get it wibbly wobbly. So I'm just luckily I didn't put any glue on this, otherwise this would have been a different story. So I'm just gonna prise that off now. I haven't burnished this down so hopefully whew, it should just come off so now what I'm going to do is I am going to put a bit of glue on that double sided tape and we're going to get it so that it is the right way up which is there so I'm going to line it up with the side here so line it up here so it's straight and I'm going to just push that over I'm just going to check I'm straight at that side there I don't want it to come over so I'm just pushing that down that looks about right okay push this over and there we go. Now I can burnish it down. That's better. That's a bit better. So push that down. And what I will do is just put a clamp on there just to keep that in place for a moment. And I did have a small one up here. Like so. So we can now go ahead well i'm going to leave that in there to just set for a moment um, but then that's sort of our page you've opened this up and then you've got your flap underneath so the so page two we will need a pocket protector and just some pattern paper so for that let me find my sheet there we go sheet nine uh, so page two we need a pocket protector and pattern paper so that's all we need and a photo mat um, in this and then an optional extra you can create a small tuck spot using elements from your chosen paper which i think we will do so with this so the pocket protector is one inch by six and five eighths and the pattern paper is six and five eighths by six and five eighths is six and five eighths by one so with this we need to score it at the half an inch mark so that's that and then the pattern paper I'm just going to use some a six uh, the eight by eight and this is six and five eighths by six and five eighths okay and then the photo mat is six inches by five and three quarters I don't think we can, and, and then we need a small tuck spot. Well, I think we'll use one of these. I think I'll use this one here and we'll use that as the tuck spot. So, oh, do you know what? I forgot to do the pattern paper for that. Now, that needs to be three eighths by six and a half. So, six and a half by three eighths. So, 
and then that will be the pattern paper for that so this should have dried now so we can take that off now although I've put this on here I am going to take it off because I don't need it I kind of ooh, have jumped the gun a little bit on that so let me take that off I think it's because I'm used to having that on there so hopefully I'm going to just pull that off and it's going to come off I think because it's very warm the tape is not that sticky so that can go over so it's just going to go over so even if you did put that on it doesn't matter it would have um, covered it anyway so we need to round our corners so get it the right way because it's just those two corners that we need to round and I'm going to ink around the top and the sides because I need to cut this um, down a little bit because this is going to become our pocket so I'm going to cut it down possibly to about let's have a look should we cut it we cut it down by two so two inches so cut the top part at two inches okay so that's going to go on the top of my page like so so I'll ink this edge as well and we'll stick this on okay like so Then we need to get our page protector and where is it gone? There it is. Our double sided tape and this goes on the valley fold side. And it goes on both sides. Okay, but we're just going to take one side off at the moment and we're going to put that bit up in the air and we're going to slide it on push it into that scored edge and then fold it down and then you can take the back off of that and then fold that over as well now I'm just going to just um, stretch this paper out to give it a bit of a curve and add our pattern paper for the page strip we can add the double sided tape now I'm going to put the double sided tape along the bottom and then glue down the sides so glue down the sides here take that off and then this is going to fit on the page like so Pull it up just a tiny bit and then push it down and then we've still we've got a little bit of a bow in there so that's where then our tag will fit in like so I'll put that in ready as I say I'm not going to cover them just yet I don't think that was anything was it so that then is our second page apart from now doing our little tag tuck spot 
Now the tuck spot I'm going to do where it comes out this way. So we can cut this down. I'm going to have, I'm going to have this one here for a change. So. And then I'm going to just mitre them corners like so. And then what I've also got, which is really, really good, are these lovely layering guides from We Are Memory Keepers. And they, what you do is you'll put your whatever it is that you're going to, you want a nice layer on. I'm just using them edges. So let's put our layer on. I'm just gonna leave it there like so. Now I will need a cutting mat for this. That's my cutting mat. I did have a sharp knife. So you get your layering guide, and I'm going to use the 1 8 one, and you butt it, this has got little grooves in it, so you butt it up to your paper, okay, when you're in the right place, just, just school, just run your knife down, okay, do the next one. Like so. Like so. And then this side here. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'm just going to cut off those mitre them corners just with a saying that we can use this actually there we go this is a nice finish one two there we go so then that is then you've got a nice scored line around that not scored line sorry nice layer like so and then that's going to fit do you know what i did say didn't i i'm going to try and keep my desk tidy i am hmm. doesn't look like it does it so this is going to fit onto our page like so now you could have it at an angle or you could have it where you've got this bit is it's only um glued on this side and this side and then you could put something in there like so um, you could have it in the middle and have something but I think I'm going to have it there and have just the edge the one edge and the bottom bit as our glue like so Stick that on there. And then I'm going to cut another one of those. And then that can go inside as a like, little tuck spot.
so that's my little tuck spot there you can obviously put a few more in if you wanted actually one more would probably look really nice in there so I may go ahead and put another one in um, a bit later um, not this one maybe I think I've got another one here somewhere maybe I have a smaller one um, that we can put in sort of one of these out of this this is out of that collectibles so we could put a smaller one in there so i may do that at a later stage but not now so that then is our page one finished apart from obviously doing the the photo mat and adding in some maybe some embellishment type things let's look what we've got in here i could put in some sort of cut some of these out would be quite nice let's cut out one of those nice pair of scissors here so we could cut out let's cut out the broadway one As I say, I'm not very good at cutting. I'm not a cutting expert. So I tend to just go around as quickly as I can and then cover up my mistakes with um, distress ink. Like so. so. And then that hides a multitude of sins. But you could back this onto some black card just so that it stands out a bit more. So you can have it there. You could put um, some glossy accents on there. That would look really nice as well. Maybe you could put some crackle, um, clear crackle on there as well would look really good. So there's quite a few things you could do with that. So I'm just going to pop it on just as it is for the moment just to give me just a bit of interest to that page like so and then that is that page done now you can if you've got some of the chipboard pieces which I do have and I think what I'm going to do is put a couple or maybe put this one here just on the edge of my photo frame uh, like so it just gives that a bit more dimension on there and I just like it and it just looks like it's floating which is good so I'm going to leave that on there like so right I'm going to leave that there for this video I really hope you've enjoyed it please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like and comment every subscriber really does help me out immensely so thank you if you do subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell as well and all that means is every time i upload a new video you will be one of the first to know about it come and follow me on social medias uh, all the links as always are in the description box down below don't forget to check out that description box though because there are tons of information in there that obviously I can't put on the video. So you will be able to find the PDF cutting guide download link in there as well. So don't forget to check that out. So whatever you're doing in the world and wherever you are, I hope you're having a really good day and I will see you again on the next one. Bye.